YouTube is changing, and so have I. This year I've seen so many videos, people posting about them leaving YouTube, retiring from YouTube. They've been burnt out, they've had enough, they're done. Why? Why are people leaving YouTube? Um, let me give you some insights. So it's, it is a bit of a question when you see these larger than life channels with million plus subscribers, why would you walk away from that? Like everyone else, I would say at a smaller level, whatever you could put whatever number you want, because at that point, that is a career for those people. And they do admit that is a dream job for most people. But I think what most people don't realize is just the percentage of people that actually make it to that level on YouTube. The rest of us have to compete in an oversaturated market of attention grabbers. And the, the, how things have changed since the start of YouTube, you almost need to like pump things out weekly to stay relevant. You almost have to transmorph into a news anchor or a salesman just to get enough impressions towards your channel. So ultimately, the main thing that's changed, I feel, is just YouTube's algorithm. They've killed evergreen content, so they force artistic types and creators to constantly churn out videos week after week after week, and as if you miss a week, they will kill your impressions. So now I know that's not always true. Once in a blue moon, they'll take one of your old videos and open the floodgates once again. And that'll stay on for another week or two, but it just, the cycle continues. It's not sustainable, or I don't, I don't know personally what level that becomes sustainable, because I, I truly feel it's not until your numbers are large enough where you're getting money outside of YouTube through sponsorships and maybe affiliate marketing and stuff if you're going that path. But like I said, it's, you almost have to go that path to make a living on YouTube, to make that your dream career. Because for most of us, it's not. For most of us, most people still require a job to pay their rent, to pay their mortgage, their grocery bills, whatever, because YouTube just doesn't cut it. Some channels are lucky enough to have the engagement required to get them thousands of dollars a month. But if I would say if you're under, especially under 5,000, don't quit your job. If you're under 10,000, probably not. Um, not to say it's not, not possible for some, but you know, there's a chart I saw a while back. I'll, I'll try to find it again, but it actually broke down and compared the subscriber brackets on channels and like put that in perspective of like how many channel channel YouTube channels were there under a thousand? How many YouTube channels were there under like 10,000? And just to see how few people actually get to the top of YouTube where it's actually a sustainable career, you're better off flipping tacos. <laughs> like if you hate doing the videos you're making, go do something you enjoy. Cause that's where I'm saying I've changed on YouTube. When I first started, I was more interested in evergreen content and sure I, w I was the salesman. I was trying to highlight products in my own life that I personally use because yes, I also wanted to someday make this a career myself. But over time and as YouTube changed, it forced me to change with it. It put extra pressure on me to get way quicker at my short films or my feature films, which to me is impossible because you can't rush art. And that's what the business of YouTube doesn't understand. Technically, you know, I'll eat my words. People are, have been rushing art, I would say, for like the past five, six, ten years, maybe. I don't know. But I feel that. And that's why I really hate watching some things now on YouTube because it's intentionally made for people with short attention spans. And that's just not the type of creator I started out being. It's not the type of content I sought out to make as these quick one hitter things, uh, you know, 
<laughs> and I'm not trying to complain too much because I've tried to merge both sides. I try to pick things that are going to cater more towards the new algorithm of YouTube. Meanwhile, trying to keep some of my morals, my principles of like what I as an artist or a creator, uh, what's unique and genuine coming from me, not just, oh, that guy made this thing popular. Let me piggyback off of this guy's idea. And not to say you can't ever do that. I think we're always constantly influenced and inspired by others' work. But when it's the intent behind it is what matters. Like if I'm intentionally stealing someone's idea or like, oh, I could just do this because it's going to appeal to a mass market. I really hate the commodification of YouTube and what it's done to creators, just the visual storytelling aspect of entertainment. Um, now, I know YouTube will always have its place in my heart. It's a useful resource to learn almost damn near anything. And I would chalk up most of my education to YouTube. Uh, and, and I can't really, I don't want to give it to YouTube because it's the creators on YouTube. You are the value. YouTube is the vehicle. And I suppose they are providing that value to us where we have a platform to be able to share our things. But I want all of you watching to realize YouTube's making money off of your hard work. And they're keeping most of it. When you go back to that graph and look down the breakdown of brackets of subscribers and you realize how many creators are not making money and how much YouTube's making off of their advertisements, it makes you sick. It makes it feel predatory in a way. Um, just to recognize all the hard work and effort and time and years that you've spent making hundreds of videos on multiple YouTube channels, only one of my channels is monetized. And right now I'm making $15 a month. <laughs> and, and again, I'm not gonna complain about it too much because I recognize this first channel, it took me many years and I've had to transition and change a lot because YouTube changed a lot. And what I started out making, YouTube didn't like me making later on, so I had to change the content I was even making. So I've experimented too much, you know, um, so I don't really have a solid foundation of a, like a particular niche audience of one thing. It's just kind of, you know, the biggest video I had on this channel was my zombie movie. And a lot of those were foreign subscribers. And I'm glad people love horror movies and zombies, but it doesn't help this channel. You know, I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. So many people got to watch my movie, my first movie, like that alone was like my biggest accomplishment on YouTube. And it didn't even reward me that like hardly, you know, I, like I'm still in the hole for what I put into that movie versus the short window of the impressions YouTube gave me for a short amount of time. And then they cut it off. And yeah, I can't make zombie movies weekly. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of special effects, a lot of editing, music composition, like the whole nine. So especially for filmmakers that are trying to be filmmakers on YouTube, stop, <laughs> like do yourself a favor. Only if you love it, like, and if you can do it fast, I guess, but like for me, I can't. And it was adding all this stress and burnout. and just to cycle it back to the beginning of this video, I feel like that's why even the people at the top of YouTube, they've burnt out. YouTube's changed. They know, they've recognized that they have to create every single week without breaks. That one guy, that Tom, uploaded a video weekly for like 10 years. Holy shit. <laughs> like that's dedication. Can't keep this up. This is my dream job and I have a lot of fun doing it. I know I'm incredibly lucky, but a dream job is still a job and it's a job that keeps getting bigger and more complicated. <laughs> I'm so tired. And I'm sure he's rewarded for it. I mean, he has millions of subscribers and if he did things the right way, he's going to take those investments and put them in the right accounts that occur interest enough where he's going to be fine for life. So 
you know, good for them. Take your family time. You deserve it. You worked hard. But the rest of us that have also been working hard that didn't quite get the impressions or the luck that YouTube threw at some of us, we're just making money for YouTube. And we're, they're stealing time away from our friends and family and the other things that we should be enjoying. And I know that's partially on us too, because we're making that choice. But that's why I'm making this video to make us a little more mindful of how we're spending our time, including the time we're spending on the videos we make. So make them fun. Make them with people you love. Make them enjoyable and make it where it doesn't have to feel like work. And if you can't do that on YouTube, then please leave. Take that break. Recenter yourself and find out what is it that you're passionate about and go find that thing again. And once you find that thing you love, that's when you take the camera back out and you start documenting those memories. I read someone else's quote recently and it was a very good perspective and it, and it had to do with video creation because he said, when you stop thinking about ideas that you can create, because a lot of people get stuck at that part of like, what good ideas can I come up with to get views and to get all this? Instead of thinking of things to create, Think of things in your life that's are, that are worthy of documenting. Because it's all around us. Your passions, your could be family, it could be events. It's like, I feel like that's, at least for me, what I need to do with YouTube going forward. I need to focus it on the things that I actually enjoy because YouTube probably isn't gonna pay me for years to come. That's just been my own experience. Um, I'm not quitting. I still love making videos. I love storytelling. And I'm not going to let YouTube defeat me on that end. I'm going to take my time and make something that I actually enjoy instead of feeling this pressure of like, oh shit, my views are down, my money's dropping, like the world's ending. <laughs> it's not. It's not. We just have to get more creative on how to sustain this lifestyle of filmmaking, video creation, whatever you want to call it, and not be so reliant on YouTube itself because we all know corporations are going to you in the ass in the end. <laughs> so that's my rant. That's my encouragement as well because I don't feel like you have to quit YouTube. Just you have to change the perspective in which I'm sorry, but YouTube probably won't be a career for most of you going forward for many, many years. It's just so saturated. Everyone shooting videos is easily on their phone. Um, so it's just more competitive than it's ever been. And the, the way the algorithm forces you to create, you're going to have to be a news acre or like a podcast that has high attention rate and everything else. But like, you know, like I said, that's not really the creator I originally sought out to be. It's something I've practiced a little bit and I'm still, you know, I don't hate doing those videos all the time. It's just not the creative itch that I've sought out to do with YouTube. But it does, you know, I'm just trying out different styles on YouTube and that's all I'm really saying is YouTube kind of molds you into a person they you have to be if you want to if you want to stay monetized but um, have multiple channels for that reason you know if you want to keep monetized like go for that but don't give up your passions don't change who you are as a filmmaker as a creator love what you do And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I don't know how I want to end this. I want to know your guys' thoughts. Do you think YouTube is creating too much pressure on video creators and filmmakers, uh, forcing them to make things week after week to stay relevant before they kill the impressions? Or do you think video creators are just a bunch of whiny crybabies that feel entitled like, oh, my art should get this many views without any effort or promoting or, you know, because I will admit there's some channels I see that they're good. Don't get me wrong. They're good. They just only have like five videos 
And I'm like, wouldn't it be great if we all made our magnum opus on our first shot and was able to have a livelihood from it? But for most of our experiences, you know, most of us have to make hundreds of videos, hundreds of videos before we even get monetized. So I think there's a little bit of both personally uh, going on. I think the algorithm forces us to be these creators that we all don't want to be. Uh, but anyway, leave your thoughts below. I'd love to hear from you. Maybe I'll read some of the, some of those comments on the next video that's related to this. Uh, go subscribe to Insight. I'm going to do more of these types of videos on that channel. Um, yeah, links, links in the description. It helps this channel out tremendously. Like I said, I ain't getting paid much anymore. So <laughs> if you have to buy anything on Amazon, links below, please. Uh, have a good year.